Hi, welcome to Relish Books. Today I'm going to be talking just a little bit about Diane Ackerman's The Zookeeper's Wife. I've talked about doing this one in my last couple videos. Um, and I really just want to highlight it because it's a book in a genre that is pretty much the only book in this particular genre that I've ever read. And I was super, super impressed by it. Um, it's been a couple years since I've read it, but um, it really it really impressed me at the time. It's really stayed with me. And that is because um, the writing is beautiful. Um, it's not maybe absolutely perfect, but it is beautiful writing. And it's nonfiction, but it's creative nonfiction. Now, I read very, very little nonfiction. I do not care for um, most most nonfiction books, I read books um, for when I'm reading book a book for enjoyment. I'm reading a story, you know, something creative. And nonfiction is usually either too dry and factual for me, um, with very little creativity or um, descriptive um, qualities to it, or it's um, much too fictionalized like if I'm reading something that's about an actual historical figure but it's like painted with romance I just don't buy it like as a kid um, like for school I read a lot of like childhood famous Americans and landmark books and they would drive me crazy because you know they were about these historical figures but it was just written like a story and with all kinds of dialogue and thoughts and emotions that we just have no way of knowing if those people thought or felt and it would just, yeah, it just really annoyed me, especially if there was like drama and I'd be like, I don't know, it just drove me nuts because it's like, we don't know if you're going to write a story, write a story, like, you know, stick with fiction. Um, for me, fiction feels a lot more real, a lot more true than most nonfiction, but this book... Um, Diane Ackerman is usually um, more of a poet um, and a naturalist. The way that she approached writing this story is really unique and I think she did an incredible job. Um, it's the story of um, Jan and Antonina Zabinski in Poland where they um, ran a zoo and then during the war um, they rescued, they sheltered and rescued over 300, um, Jews, and it's just an amazing story. I'm not going to talk too much about what actually happens in the book. Um, you should definitely read it. Just, it's, that you know, there's, seems to be like an endless supply of really unique and interesting war stories, but, um, just not only the amazing stories of them rescuing people, but their, um, their work with animals and, um, Antony's and his connection with animals is just, it adds this whole other side to the story that's really fascinating. Um, yeah, it just discusses a lot of, um, things that I had no idea happened during the war, like, um, Hitler's fascination with animals and his collecting animals and wanting to like create super races of animals the same that he wanted to like create super races of you know of people was something I really didn't know about and was fascinating to um to learn about but mostly um yeah the stories stories are incredible the characters are wonderful um but really what I want to talk about is the writing um because she approached it um, from a completely non-fiction standpoint. Like, she wasn't going to put in anything that was fiction. Like, she was drawing largely on Antonina's diary, um, books that um, Jan wrote, interviews, um, talking with their son, all these different resources that she had. So any time in the book that it even says, like, Antonina thought or wondered or felt it's from a diary or an interview. It's from some source. There is nothing, absolutely nothing made up in the book. And yet it reads like a novel. Um, the descriptions of the places are rich and beautiful. And you get the characters 
feelings and what they would have actually seen, what they actually felt, what they actually said. And um, yeah, it was really an experience unlike anything else because, you know, it's nonfiction and at times, you know, it reads a lot like a novel, but at times it does definitely feel like um, history, more of a, like a factual history book. But there's so much creativity to it and imagination while still being completely historically accurate. Um, and yeah, that's something that I have never seen done before. I know that um, is not, again, it's not a genre I read a lot, but um, yeah, it was just totally unique and I was so amazed because um, I feel like what she did was harder than fiction and harder than nonfiction because she brought the two together into this um, new kind of subgenre almost that's really amazing. Um, and yeah, and the stories and the people are so worth reading about. Um, definitely, definitely take the time to read this book, even if it's not the kind of genre that you would normally be interested in. I think um, I think you'll really like it. I think anybody would really. Most anybody would really like it. I think it's really, really amazing. Um, as far as her other writings, um, I've read a little bit of her poetry. I, I'm not a huge fan of her style of poetry. I'm, I'm a huge poetry fan, but I'm very particular. I feel like sometimes people lump poetry all together, um, not really realizing how different a lot of it is from other sorts. Like, if somebody says oh, I love to read books. Um, we don't usually like automatically assume that they love to read every kind of book because we know all about the different genres and all the different sorts and different levels of quality. Um, and the same is true with poetry. You know, if I say I love to read poetry, um, I definitely, definitely don't love to read all poetry. I'm, I'm very particular. And her style is just not really my thing. Um, but some of it is beautiful. A lot of it is about nature, um, about animals and stuff. Um, and then she has some, some other non-poetry collections. Um, she has some essays and stuff like that, I think. Um, no other books, though, that is in this style. This is a completely unique kind of standalone thing. Her, I think it's, I guess you call it a memoir. Um, a Hundred Names for Love, I believe it's called, was really, really good, though. Um, and it was just a personal a personal book about, um, really about, uh, I think her husband had a, was it, I think it was a stroke. It's been a while since I've read that one too, but um, his path to recovery and um, there was a lot of really stunning and interesting research about how brains work. Like she has so much different, um, different fields of research and different information to offer in her different books. Um, so as far as other books that I've read by her, that would be the one that I would really recommend um, other than this one. Because, yeah, her poetry, I mean, I'm sure, sure a lot of people like it. It's not really my thing. It's not that it's not good. It's just not not really my thing. Um, but, yeah, this, this book is incredible. It's, it's, in a, it's in a category all by itself, I think. Um... And yeah, I, this copy is signed personally to me. I stood in line at one of her readings and got her signature. It's very nice. Um, I don't know. I felt, at the time, I felt kind of funny. Everybody in front of me had, like, all these stacks of books. And they were getting them, like, signed to all their friends and stuff. So it came up to me, and I have, like, my one book. And she's like, oh, who do you want me to make this out to? And I'm just like, um, me. It made me feel kind of bad, but it was really fun, and um, yeah, I uh, it's really nice having that. It's always neat, even though, you know, to meet an author in a in a line like that, it's not like meeting them personally, really, because they're never gonna remember you. You're um, you're one person in another huge line of people, but it is really neat for me, um, and and yeah, especially since I've like I've mentioned before, it's um. Most of my favorite authors are not living, so um, to have the opportunity of meeting some of the people that um, are still alive <laughs> um, that I admire is always really neat. So yeah, I just definitely recommend this book um, as a great story, a 
great um, a great example, again, of just a totally different kind of genre. Um, if you like nonfiction, you'll love it. If you like fiction, you'll love it. Um, yeah, just a really, really great book. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on The Zookeeper's Wife, um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.